I work whatever jobs I can find to pay the bills. This particular night, I was pulling an overnight shift at a convenience store out on the highway. Nothing too exciting usually happens, mostly just truckers coming in for coffee and snacks. But that night, things took a dark turn. It was getting close to 2 a.m., which was closing time. A beat-up old car pulled into the parking lot, one of those huge old sedans from like the 70s or 80s. Four guys got out, looking pretty rough. Two of them were probably in their 40s, unshaven with stained clothes like they hadn't changed in days. The other two looked younger, maybe late 20s, but with that kind of glazed look in their eyes that makes you think they'd been awake too long on something stronger than coffee. I'll be honest, seeing them roll up made me nervous right away. We get some unsavory characters coming through, but there was just a weird intensity to these guys. They weren't yelling or anything, just quietly purposeful as they walked towards the doors. I could smell booze and cigarettes as they entered. We'll take some road sodas and a couple lighters, one of the older ones grunted as they spread out around the store. I tried to play it cool and just ring them up, keeping one eye on them as they drifted around, picking up drinks and snacks. The younger ones kept sort of drifting towards the counter, one grabbing a handful of lighters like he was just going to pocket them. I had to speak up firmly to get him to bring them over. That's when I noticed one of the older guys had wandered behind the counter into the employee area. Hey man, you can't be back here, I said as calmly as I could manage. He just kind of squinted at me with those beady eyes and kept on ambling around. That's when the other younger guy reached over the counter and grabbed me by the shirt, pulling me face to face with him. His breath reeked of stale booze and his teeth were rotted out. Don't worry about him, buddy, he hissed, spittle hitting my face. We're just taking a look around. I felt the fear rising up as I realized these guys weren't just here for snacks. They were casing the place for a robbery, or maybe worse. I'll be honest, I briefly thought about just letting them take the cash to avoid a confrontation, but I knew that wasn't the right call. I glanced over towards the phone, thinking maybe I could hit the burglar alarm, but the guy yanked on my shirt harder. Don't even think about it, he growled lowly. He pulled me halfway over the counter, the other skinny guy now grabbing my arms to help drag me across. I lashed out, kicking and trying to wrestle free. That's when I felt something smash into the back of my head one of the older guys having grabbed something off the shelf as a weapon. I was blacking out as they dragged me down, kicking me in the ribs viciously, while the older one kept bashing that object against my head and face. Through the ringing in my ears, I could dimly hear the bell ringing as the door opened again. I thought it might have been another customer coming in, but then I recognized the familiar voice that called out. Police! Don't move! It was Carl the regular cop that patrols this stretch of highway. He must have been coming in for his nightly coffee break. The guys were just as surprised, and everything descended into chaos. More shouting, sounds of a scuffle, a couple pops that I guess were gunshots, though it's all still so blurry. When I finally came to, the paramedics were loading me into an ambulance. My face was a swollen, bloody mess, and I had a severe concussion from the beating. The cops said a few customers had seen the commotion from outside and called it in just before Carl arrived. He'd managed to detain two of the guys, but the other two had taken off, leading to a manhunt in the area. The ones they caught were slapped with charges for assault, attempted robbery, you name it. As for me, I was out of work for quite a while recovering. The damage to my face and head was pretty severe. Turns out one of my eye sockets was shattered from the repeated blows, leaving me permanently blinded in that eye. I've got some nasty scars as a reminder, and the doc said I was damn lucky things didn't turn out even worse. Even after everything, I try not to dwell too much on what happened or feel anger towards those guys. They were just desperate, soulless people lashing out, not monsters. At the end of the day, I got out with my life and that's what matters most. Sure, I'm a little more wary working those graveyard shifts now, but I won't let one dark encounter shake my view of humanity. That convenience store is long gone now, closed up a few years later. But I still work those odd jobs, keeping my head down and trying to stay out of trouble. I don't dwell on the past too much anymore. It's all just bumps and bruises in the rear view as I keep trudging down the road towards whatever's next. I'm a ranger who patrols the remote campgrounds in the forests outside of town. It's a pretty quiet job most of the time. 
I spend my days hiking the trails, making sure campers are following the rules, watching out for any safety issues. I enjoy being out in nature, keeping things in order. It's peaceful work. This particular night in early October, I was doing my usual rounds after sunset. The fall colors were beautiful that evening, amber and crimson leaves rustling in the crisp breeze. Clouds drifted across the half moon, throwing eerie shadows between the trees. I clicked on my flashlight as darkness fell. I checked the campsites one by one, making sure the evening fires were properly extinguished. No issues at the family tent sites or RV camp loops. I headed down the trail towards the back campsites, the ones farthest from the ranger station. Those tend to attract folks looking for more isolation. As I neared campsite 27, my boot crunched on something. A beer can, crushed and muddy in the middle of the path. That was odd. Campers know better than to litter. I swept my flashlight beam across the ground and saw a couple more cans, along with a sleeping bag and backpack strewn carelessly across the site. Definitely not normal camper behavior. I felt my heart rate pick up, gut tightening with unease. I'd dealt with unruly folks before, but you can never be too careful out here alone after dark. Squatters and drug use sometimes cause trouble at remote sites like this. I unclipped the metal rod from my belt, holding it ready in a defensive grip as I slowly approached the campsite. The sleeping bag looked dirty, stained with something dark. The contents of the backpack were spilled out on the ground. Clothes, food wrappers, some letters and papers. Hello? I called out sternly. Come out and show yourself. No response but the eerie stillness. I felt eyes on me and swung my flashlight beam towards the tree line. A faint glint of reflected light made me freeze. There, just behind that oak, something metallic was partly visible, not quite in my full line of sight. I remembered to breathe, steadying myself. Could be any number of things out here. Maybe equipment left by another ranger. Still, my instincts screamed at me to get out of there. Every nerve ending was electrified, senses heightened to catch the slightest noise or movement. I backed up slowly keeping the metal rod extended in front of me, edging away from the tree line. That's when my boot struck something soft and yielding on the ground. I looked down and the flashlight beam revealed a human hand, grimy and grotesquely bent at an unlikely angle. My heart pounded in my ears as I backpedaled, sweeping the light wildly. There, partially hidden in the bushes, a body, a man, lying twisted and motionless on the forest floor. My stomach heaved as the smell of decay hit me. Terror seized me and I took off running back towards the trailhead, hands shaking so badly I could barely hold the flashlight. I heard my own harsh breaths echoing in the darkness. Breaking through the tree line, I scrambled for the emergency radio on my belt. Ranger Station, this is Patrol 42. I gasped out the words between ragged breaths. Situation at Campsite 27. Possible casualty. Need police and paramedics ASAP. Static crackled for a moment before the response came through. Copy that 42. Help is on the way. What's your status? I'm shaken up but physically okay, I managed. Just, just get here quick. It seemed to take an eternity before I saw the flashing lights through the trees. Police cruisers, an ambulance. Finally, a blaze of emergency vehicles surrounded by grim-faced officers with weapons drawn. Over here? I waved them down the path towards the campsite. The body is in the bushes at Site 27. Looked like... Looked like he'd been there a while. I swallowed hard, fighting nausea. I didn't get too close a look. The paramedics moved briskly past me, disappearing down the trail with a stretcher. I gave my statement to the police, told them about the disheveled campsite, the cans and sleeping bag, the papers and backpack. Answered a dozen more questions as best I could. Yeah, the man was wearing jeans and a plaid shirt. Late 30s or early 40s, maybe. Facial hair. Couldn't really make out any other identifying details in the low light. No, I didn't see or hear anyone else in the area when I arrived. They bagged up the backpack contents to analyze the papers for any clues to the man's identity. Didn't seem hopeful. He could have been a drifter or homeless guy who wasn't close with any friends or family. So many people just... fell through the cracks. One of the officers must have noticed the shaken look on my face. You did the right thing calling it in, she assured me. 
This wasn't your fault. Looks like the guy may have been dead at least a couple days. Probably some kind of a crime. She put a hand on my shoulder. Go get some rest after we're done here. You've had enough excitement for one night. I just nodded numbly, unable to shake the feeling of dread. They still had to identify the body, figure out who was responsible for killing that man and dumping him out here. Were the killer's other squatters holed up in these woods somewhere? A random crazy from out of town? I shuddered at the thought that a murderous scumbag could be lurking in these very same hiking trails I patrolled daily. Eventually they cleared me to go, said they'd call if any other questions came up. I drove home in a haze of nerves and adrenaline, showered until the hot water ran out, desperate to wash away the night's events. But even after I crawled into bed, I couldn't fully shake my unease. Something dark had happened out there tonight, ugly and violent. I work the graveyard shift delivering packages around town. Not my dream job, but it pays the bills. Keeps me out on the road, which I don't mind too much. Gives me time to myself, you know? A couple nights ago, I was out on my usual route when this massive storm blew in out of nowhere. Talking golf ball-sized raindrops, roaring winds, the kind of weather that makes you want to pull over and wait it out. Which is exactly what I did when I spotted this rundown building off the side of the highway. Place looked deserted. Boards across the windows, overgrown lot, graffiti on the walls. But any port in a storm, right? I pulled up, killed the engine, and grabbed my flashlight from the truck. Made a beeline for the front door, ducking my head against the pounding rain. That's when I heard it. This faint scuffling sound coming from inside, like something, or someone, moving around. My first instinct was to haul ass out of there, but calmer heads prevailed and I figured I'd at least check it out. See if somebody needed help maybe. Tried the door and wouldn't you know it, the old thing creaked right open, swept my light beam around the room. Hello? Anybody here? That's about the time this gravelly voice answered back from the shadows. Get out. Get out of here before it's too late. I damn near jumped out of my skin, swung the light towards the voice. And that's when I caught a glimpse of this scrawny old man huddled in the far corner. Dude looked rough. Tattered clothes clinging to his bony frame, wild eyes peeking out from a tangle of graying hair. He reeked too, like he hadn't showered in months. Hey man, I'm not looking for any trouble, I told him, trying to keep my voice calm and steady. Just need to wait out the storm for a bit. Doesn't seem to register though. This guy's rocking back and forth now, muttering urgently under his breath. Leave. You have to leave now. Not gonna lie, I'm starting to seriously regret coming inside this place. Every instinct is screaming at me to get the hell out of there. I take a step towards the exit, and that's when the old guy stops rocking, slowly turns his head and looks me dead in the eye. It was unnerving, like something switched in his brain. You leave, he says in this chilling monotone. And if you know what's good for you, you won't breathe a word about me to anyone. I swear I felt the blood drain from my face in that moment. Didn't even respond. Just turned and booked it out of there as fast as my legs could carry me. Damn near mowed the poor guy down getting back to my truck. Peeled out of that lot so fast I could feel the tire struggling for grip on the rain-soaked pavement. I don't mind telling you, I was an absolute wreck for the rest of that shift white knuckling the wheel, checking my mirrors every few seconds like I was expecting that old psycho to suddenly appear, running through the night's events over and over, trying to make some kind of sense out of it all. But the more I played it back, the less it added up. What was a guy like that doing all alone in an abandoned building? And who, or what, was he so desperately warning me to stay away from? The thought of it made my skin crawl. I spent a long time afterwards questioning whether I should report what happened to the authorities. Part of me knew I should. Guy seemed seriously disturbed and potentially dangerous. But the other part, the part fueled by his haunting words, that part persuaded me to keep my mouth shut. So that's what I did. Went about my life like normal, started and ended each night like any other. But I'd be lying if I said the experience didn't leave its mark. Even now, months later. I'll catch myself scanning empty parking lots in a new way, 
or doing an extra sweep with my light before getting out of the truck. All because of one man's unraveling desperation etched into my brain. Whatever's going on with that guy, whatever secrets he was guarding so fiercely, I figure it's better off leaving that stone unturned. <laughs>